call it Color is the name of this garden. And today I'm in Garden World and we're bringing you one of the amazing gardens put together by great designers at their spring festival. Call it Color makes sense because it pops with yellow. It's got beautiful contemporary elements, water, great structures, and it's only six meters by 15. Although this garden is relatively small, this could be a townhouse garden in the back of any complex anywhere in South Africa. Look at the clever use of space, and this is what inspires me. Right over here, underneath the beautiful pergola with the contemporary lines, pops of color at the back, this is the formal seating area. And then, as we walk down the stairs, into a breathing space. This is the space that separates one area of the garden into another, and then right in to the relaxed, chilled zone. And this is the spot where probably all of us want to hang out, you know? With this wonderful bog garden behind me, full of these gorgeous arum lilies. And then check out the water feature, guys. I mean, this is just wicked. It's a table that's a water feature. Multifunctional, yeah, I can hear the water, and there's a space to put our glass. This relaxed, informal raised section has been brought together beautifully with the repetition of one element, and that is the decking. So the decking has not only been used on the floor, but it's also been used as the seating area, which I really like for two reasons. Why? Because wood doesn't get that intense heat that you get on concrete. If this was concrete and this was in the blazing sun, well, I wouldn't be sitting on here right now. But wood is a different element which really does absorb and it doesn't give you that, that glaring hot, hot element. So the repetition, not any good, but also for practical reasons. And the fact that the decking is repeated at the back here also works for me. And it's the thread. It's a thread that you find going right through the garden. The intermediate area, which we were talking about, that breathing space, has been done really nicely with the use of dwarf mondo. Now, dwarf mondo grass, so easy, so simple. Guys, you can grow it anywhere, in the sun or in the shade. And there are other options that you can use as well. You could put gravel in between there. You could even go with a little diamondia, which is a little round silver leaf plant, which also looks quite awesome between it. Or something like Penny Royal which is like a peppermint. So when you walk upon it, you get that wonderful fragrance. In dividing this area from the main garden up there, which is the main structured area, and all those pops of color coming down to here, you need this to be quiet and calm. So instead of using bold planting, what's been used is gentle colors, a few pale blues, some pinks, a little bit of yellow, and you can see that and with a few pops of white just bringing it through and almost giving a gentleness. If you didn't stop and look, you wouldn't actually notice it, but it's doing its thing, filling in the space and giving you that great transition into the next section of the garden. In such a small space, three distinct areas of use have been incorporated. And we need to think of our gardens just like our homes. We've got the dining room, we've got the kitchen, we've got the bedroom. So how do we make our garden similar to that? And that's what I want you to take home from today. I love the pops of colour, they, they're almost like bubbles coming out the wall and that's the illusion that this yellow creates, just three spheres literally on, on a background with that beautiful rusted technique and it makes the garden seem deeper, seem longer and the colour is also repeated in this beautiful sphere which is also repeating the circles. This is a spot that I could really sit in, grab a book, do some work and it gives you that feeling of formality. But the formality is not only achieved by the pergola, it's also achieved by the type of planting. Very, very simple, literally five or six shrubs. And the shrub that they've used is quite an amazing shrub, a beautiful old fashioned um, shrub. It's called Pittosporum. And when you squash the leaves, it's got a beautiful lemon fragrance. I love this Pittosporum because it's also got a really sexy black bark. Look at that, ah, it's wicked, man. So you've got the black, you've got the yellow, you've got these tall upright plants that work perfectly in sun or in shade, so they'll grow almost anywhere. Underplanted with a very low planting of primulas and some nandinas, that's giving you that differentiation and height. If you didn't have these here, folks, the space would look bland. All you'd be seeing is walls and the reflection would really hurt your eyes and it wouldn't give you that intimate feeling that we have now. And all those elements make this a really cool space. I love this combination. And it, it's 
all got to do with daisies. It really is crazy daisy. So we've got the little kingfisher daisy here, which is called Felicia, which is indigenous, really tough, incredibly hardy. And likewise, going with it is the little osteospermum, um, which is a cape daisy. And you know, these guys come out in so many different colors. I love this one because it's got a bit of purple in it. And the purple is picking up with the blue here, the yellow complementing it. I mean, you just look in there and that is just like a painting. And then just to add a bit of pop, the ordinary white marguerite daisies and doing their job just so well. Right on the edge here is a lovely little gray ground cover called Hemichrysum, tough as nails. So this section of the garden really screams, I'm okay, I'm pretty, pretty tough and I can grow in lots of sun and don't overwater me. And all in all, I love it. I love the colors and I think it's really bold to bring yellow into any space, whether it be in your home, in your clothing, or even in your garden.